Thank you, Reg. Hello. You are very welcome. <laughs> wow. Hmm. Have you ever had a day where everything goes wrong all at once? Well, Gray, my boyfriend, and I had a day like that a couple of weeks ago. He thought he might have skin cancer. I thought I might be pregnant. My car was clamped. My Instagram account was cloned. The cat got lost and his watch broke. Life doesn't happen in the way that we want it to happen. Things don't happen according to our wish and our will and certainly not according to our timing. Nobody wants COVID. Nobody wants lockdowns. And nobody wants the ordinary stuff that happens in life of people getting ill, losing jobs, roofs leaking when it rains a lot. How do we cope amongst the chaos, the uncertainty, the confusion? How do we Yeah, what do we do? How do we do it? Well, I think the first thing we need to do is to get physical, to get out of our whirring heads full of all sorts of thoughts and paragraphs, sentences and words, and to come back into the body. The first thing we need to do is to admit to ourselves that what's happening is actually happening. Usually we tend to go off into um, lots of meetings and to-do lists or denying that it's happening or ignoring that it's happening or being angry that it's happening or resisting that it's happening. We have to come back. We have to come back to ourselves, to our body, which is where reality is. We need to come back to our lived experience, to our feelings and our instincts about what's actually happening. And so for us, for Gray and I, on that day, the most important thing that needed our attention was little Pluto. Pluto is a small, black, skittish, sleek cat, a perfect witch's cat. And he'd only been with us for two days. He'd been Gray's cat. And so he hadn't yet settled with us and he certainly didn't know the environment. We were in a terrible panic. How could we have been such bad parents? How could we possibly have lost a cat so quickly? So we swung into action. I started making little handwritten notes and we started knocking on the doors of our neighbours down the street. It was really quite peculiar. It's COVID times. How do you knock on somebody's door and say, excuse me, can I come in? Can I have a look in your garden? Might you possibly have a cat that's gone missing? My daughter and I were knocking on some doors. Gray was knocking on other doors. Nobody slept that night. The following morning, I realized that we really needed to calm down. So I bought us a Turkish coffee, flavored with cardamom and a really juicy brownie. And we sat down and we had a chat. And we realized that it wasn't actually the cat we were most concerned about. It was ourselves. We were both rather in a state of fear at other people being angry at us. I was afraid Gray would be so angry we'd split up and he was afraid that his flatmates would be so angry with him that he wouldn't have them as friends. You see, we were terrified that what we'd done was just appalling. So we sat and we talked and we realised that yes, we had been careless. Yes, we had rushed. And there had been accidental things that had happened, like 
the noise of the dog from next door and another noise from the other side. And actually, actually, we weren't so very terrible. We didn't deserve to be condemned or excommunicated. How do you cope when you make a mistake? How do you cope with a failure? I guess what I want to flag is that most of the time, what we're afraid of is not what is happening and not what's about to happen, but what's already happened, it's in the past. <clears throat> and that's a hard thing to do by oneself. It's much easier to do that with a friend, with a lover, with a parent, with a therapist, with a coach, with a teacher, with a yellow rubber duck. It's much easier to talk when one is accompanied. It's much easier to unpack all the details that need to be unpacked. And it may sound corny, but what's needed is acceptance and self-love and then we can focus on the task in hand and so we set off newly focused we set off i made i designed some uh, wonderful well i thought they were wonderful full color posters with a picture of pluto the cat we printed 250 of them and we had a plan. We were going to go to Redbourne Avenue and Dorset Mews and Claverley Grove. And so we did. We knocked on doors and we spoke to people and we were energised and we were motivated and we were bringing all our energy and action to the problem. At a certain point, we were also really enjoying ourselves. We didn't want to stop. We wanted to keep going and feel that we were tackling the problem but we were tired and we were hungry and we needed to stop. So we said we won't stop for long. We came back and we made a delicious supper. And after the supper and a little rest, I realized that we needed to make it clear to Pluto that he was loved. We needed to call Pluto home was able to think in a new way. So we put Olive the dog, smelly Olive the dog, who's Pluto's best friend out into the backyard. And I made a special bowl with smoked salmon and cheddar cheese and yogurt to call Pluto. And I sang songs of love, welcoming him home. My point is, have you ever tried to solve a problem? And in the process, forgotten yourself, abandoned yourself, neglected yourself, put all your attention on solving the problem, but forgotten that you're actually part of the solution. And if you forget yourself, it's all too easy for that to lead to another problem being created. And pleasure Finding pleasure in the situation, however challenging the situation is, is essential. Pleasure can be found in food or a warm shower or going for a walk or, well, that's the task is to find the pleasure. And pleasure brings enrichment. It brings enlivenment. I'm not even sure that's a word, but there you go. It's an example of the thing that I'm talking about. It brings something fresh. It brings the ability to think in a fresh way, to be creative and come up with new insights. By now it was getting dark and my phone number had been distributed across the neighborhood and the phone began to ring 
and people were sighting the cat. They said, we have got your black cat. And so off we chased to this person's garden, to another person's alleyway. And each time we were disappointed, it was not our Pluto. We were starting to despair. It was getting cold and we were tired. And as Grey was off, off in yet another um, adventure to try and actually grab or find one of these black cats, I had nothing else to do but to pray. So I stood there in the darkness on the street and I prayed to God for our cat to come home. And I imagined the cat coming home, snuggled up with the dog. And I brought all my feelings and my wishes and my hopes that the cat would come home. And what I'm wanting to convey to you is that your power lies not just in your doing, not just in your manifest actions, not just in your doing in the external world, but in the combination of action in the internal world and the external world. It lies in surfing those ups and downs, whatever they may be, it lies in garnering and being with those feelings. In handing over the outcome to a higher intelligence. And to letting go of the outcome. And the outcome of our story is that we came home that evening and Grey opened the back door and little Pluto walked into his arms. And it took us some days really to calm, to calm down from the intensity of that experience. And what I want to leave you with is the sense of their being intelligence in everything that life brings us, even when we're afraid and challenged and things look like a disaster, even when we don't know what's going on, inside of the problem is a seed. Inside the darkness is the gold. If we bring ourselves, if we can bring ourselves fully to it, something does get transformed. And we ended up with a kind of transformed potential. I mean, yes, the cat was back home. But we had gained a new map of the neighbourhood. We'd gained new connections, enriched connections, and an enriched sense of, of our own creative capacities and of our relationship. So this way of coming back to the body, of becoming present to what's really going on, however uncomfortable it may be, of finding the pleasure within whatever is happening, of activating our personal power and finding our potential is the way that I work with people. And I think this is the bit where I can say, or I do say, or you'd like me to say, that I um, love to work with people in this way, coming back to the body, back to the essential nourishment of pleasure. And I am offering to Evolve members one uh, session at a vastly reduced price. And um, 
I'd be very happy to have a chat with anyone who is interested in this embodied way of being and living and finding the fulfillment from within the fear.